Good morning everyone. Today we discuss the shear stress in beams. We would like to study how the internal balancing forces are developed and transferred between different parts of the beam when the beam is subjected to bending and how that balancing force is producing shear stress in beams. We will study the concept of shear flow and shear stress and will develop equations for calculating those parameters. Let's start with the sample beam that is subjected to the bending. There is a beam that consists of three parts, one rectangle at the middle part shown in blue and two other rectangles located on the side. The beam is subjected to two moments on the right and on the left and the moments are not equal to each other. One of them is larger than the other one. Just let's assume the right one is larger than the left one. The length of the beam is L or delta X. I want to study this beam and see what is happening in terms of stresses that are developed in the beam. So first of all, I'm going to take out one of those parts and study this part individually. We know that because of the bending moment, there will be bending stress on the beams. This bending stress is zero at the neutral axis and that would have maximum values on the sides because stresses are linearly increasing to the side. Bending stress on the right side, I'm going to call that sigma BR is moment MC over I or MY over I. Bending stress on the left side or sigma BL is moment on the left M sub L multiplied by Y divided by I. Y is distance of neutral axis or centroid from the point at which we want to determine stress. So if I want to determine stress on the very top portion of the beam, this is going to be Y. Now let's get rid of everything else and just focus on that part on top. I want to see what are the stresses that are acting on top part of this beam. The stresses that are acting on the beams would provide a force. On the right side, I'm going to call it F sub R, and on the left side, I'm going to call it F sub L. That resultant force, as shown here in this animation, is the resultant of this stress block on the right and on the left side. Force on the right side would be the volume of that stress block. Mathematically, we write it as integral of bending stress over the entire area, or sigma b dA. Sigma b, I'm going to replace the bending stress equation. Because we are determining the bending, the resultant force on the right side, I'm going to use the moment on the right side, m sub r, multiplied by y, divided by i. Moment of inertia, or i, is going to be the same on both sides, so I just use i. And then I'm going to integrate that over the entire area of that part of the beam. Moment and i are going to be constant, and I can take them out of integral. And the equation simplifies to mr divided by i multiplied by y dA. What is integral of y dA? Let me remind you some equations that we had in the past and we have learned that in statics. Moment of inertia of a beam generally is described as y squared dA. In addition to that, sometimes we call it the second moment of area. Why do we call it the second moment of area? Because we have y squared in this equation. Similar to that, there is another property that we have learned in statics called the first moment of area, and that is integral of y dA. To ensure you that we have seen this parameter before, let me remind you what is the equation for the centroid. Equation for the centroid is described as integral of y dA divided by integral of dA. Integral of y dA is Q, and integral of dA is simply area. So the location of centroid is simply the first moment of area divided by the cross-section area of the section. Now, I'm going to plug that back into that FR equation. So the total force that acts on the right side of that part of the beam is M sub R multiplied by the first moment of area divided by the second moment of area or the moment of inertia. Similar to that, without proving, we can determine that force on the left side is moment on the left side multiplied by Q divided by I. All right? Now, these two forces are acting on that part of the beam. Is this element in equilibrium? There should be one force that we call it balancing force or delta F that would be developed in order to make this element in equilibrium. I'm going to call that balancing force as delta 
F, or the difference between the forces on the left and on the right side. If we have these two parts not connected together, there is no way for shear force to be transferred from one side to the other one. But if those parts are connected together, say by glue, by nails, by bolts, then the shear force could be transferred and that allows for this unbalanced forces to be equalized. Now let me plug the values into this equation, minus mlq over i. And now I can simplify that into this equation. So delta f is the difference between the moments multiplied by q divided by i. So that is delta mq divided by i. This is the first important equation that you wanted to prove here. This balancing force is the force that is required to balance that piece of the element with the length of L, or let's call it delta x. I want to know what would be the required force in the unit length of the beam. So I'm going to divide that by the length of this element. If I divide that by delta x, I would come up with another important property that is called shear flow. So shear flow is simply delta F divided by the length of the beam. Or in that case, if we call that length as delta X, this is called shear flow. So again, shear flow is the balancing force in the unit length of the beam. I'm going to plug that equation here, delta M Q divided by delta X I. All right, this is going to give us the shear flow, but this could be also simplified further. Do you remember in the beam deflection problems, we have found a relationship between forces and moments and loads and slope and deformations, right? What is the relationship between moments and shear force? We know that the moment is going to be the area under the shear force, or mathematically, that is integral of shear force over the length of the beam. In other words, I can say that shear force is equal to the derivative of the moment with respect to x. That is going to be equal to delta m divided by delta x. So delta m divided by delta x is actually the shear force in the beam. And I would get to this important equation, vq over i. And that is one of the most important equations that we have for determining shear flow and shear stresses in the beams. If we want to determine the balancing force, we can use this one and multiply this VQ over I by delta X if we have shear force, or we can use delta MQ over I depending on what is given in the problem statement. So either would work. All right, now the last important equation that we have in shear stress in beams. Look at this problem. Again, look at that animation. This force is acting here. If I want to determine how much is shear stress developed by that balancing force, how would I do that? How would I determine shear force on that part of the beam? What is the definition of shear stress? Okay, it seems that I showed you so many integration and these kind of things that you are... Okay, what is stress? Force over area. Okay. <laughs> what is the area that that force is acting on? The area is the area that these two parts are connected together, which is shown in red here. That is, a, there's a rectangle here. The area is length, or delta x, multiplied by this thickness, okay? If I want to determine how much is shear stress, I would divide this force by this area. Area is delta x multiplied by the thickness. So I'm going to divide the balancing force by shear stress, or I would divide shear flow by the thickness. If we use T for the thickness, we get this equation, V, Q over I, T. That is the second important equation that we have for shear stress in beams. I wanted to prove these equations because we need to understand how does it work in order to be able to apply that into different problems and understand what is the thickness in different cases.